just a small introduction for Mr. Bijudan. He is the founding partner of Legally Tech, which is a technology law focused law firm. He has previously worked with uh, the Software Freedom Law Center India, where he was the executive director. He's also worked at Luthra and Luthra, as well as Amarchand and Mangaldas as a senior associate. Mr. Nair is currently involved in open source license enforcement in India and is responsible for drafting open source policies for various entities across the globe. He also represents Open Inno Invention Network and License on Transfer Network uh, as the global patent non-aggression communities in India. He uh, mentors at the German Accelerator Founder Institute and International Trade Council, where he advises companies and startups across the globe, both in Germany and across all over the world. So with that small introduction, we I hand over the stage to Mr. Nair, Nair who will be speaking on Open Invention Network today. Mr. Nair, over to you, sir. Thank you, Shekhar. Sir, do you want a presenter? Okay. No, no, I'll just. So I'm thankful to uh, so Mr. Sarkar that uh, he had touched upon some various issues on IP before this and open source before I started my session. So, uh, so my name is Biju Nair and I am part of the global community called as Open Invention Network. I wear various other road hats. So, but today I'll be talking about Open Invention Network. So before we start discussing about open invention network, let's look at uh, intellectual property from a very different perspective. So today we'll be dealing only with patents in all the IPs, among the IPs, we'll be dealing with uh, patents. So typically companies globally think in silos. They think about their IP. They don't think about cooperation. So let's look at to IP from a very, uh, IP especially patents from a very different perspective. So what is this perspective? That it is a perspective of collaboration. Instead of a closed ecosystem, which is thinking in, in silos. So what we will be doing is we'll be discussing about how companies, startup projects, open source projects across the globe are coming together on various aspects, various softwares and applications in a collaborative approach and not in a closed silo approach of thinking. So uh, this helps. So at the same time, there is collaboration. At the same time, there is competition. So how does this happen? Let's say we are in a street. The roads in that street is what the collaboration is happening because everybody has to use it. That's the fundamental technology we are talking about. The so roads are the fundamental technology for a second we can assume. The buildings are the individual, uh, you know, ownership of each of the people. So there is collaboration on the roads, but at the same time, there is competition by each building owners. So the objective of a corporate entity is also fulfilled and the collective strength of each of the entity, whether you are a project, you are a startup, you are a company, everybody has a profit motive objective. And if you look at IP also, there has to be some incentive given. What is a patent grant? It's end of the day, the grant of an incentive by the government of that country. So similarly, both these objectives are fulfilled through this community. So whether it is software, whether it is hardware, because today, if you look at any hardware, it is supported by a software. Let's, let's say you use a phone, it is supported by an Android, which is an open source, uh, you know, software and application. So in the uh, stack, uh, the base, which is, let's see the, uh, say, uh, take the example of a road, which is, there is a collaboration. And among the building owners, there is a competition. So that is the basic premises we are building upon. So if you today look into any uh, touch point, so you go to an ATM, you go and visit the web, so you will be using PHP. Whether you are using uh, a uh, car, new car, so it, it is, you will be using Android Auto. So whether you are using a mobile, it is Android. Any touch point, you have Linux and open source somewhere 
around them. So your mobile, your phone, uh, your TV, many of them are Android TV, your car. So across us, a normal individual, you're using a website, there is PHP. So across us, there are various softwares and applications uh, which run on Linux and open source. So let's us understand that if there is a fight on patents, on this fundamental technology, then there will be no end to the fight. So how do we move out of this fight and collaborate with each other where we also make money? We, you know, we have cooperation also, we have competition also. So the, the concept is called co-option, where there is competition also happening and cooperation also happening among, on various things. So on fundamental technology, which is open source and Linux, there is cooperation. And let's say, take the example of Android. Google owns, Microsoft owns many of the patents on Android. So they will make money on the services they provide on top of those uh, soft uh, patents. But the fundamental patents, they will not uh, you know, sue each other on those uh, Android patents, although they own those patents. But they will not uh, you know, sue each other, the community members, on those fundamental patents. But they will also at the same time make money from the services they offer to various providers. Let's say uh, Google Map, Android, uh, you know. So Map is one of the services which Google provides to uh, stakeholders across the globe. You would have seen, uh, you know, Google Maps on, uh, let's say, Uber or Ola. So all those places Google is making money. But if uh, tomorrow Google uh, stops, uh, you know, any company from using, uh, stating that, you know, I am the patent owner of Android, then there is, nobody will use uh, Android. But today it is the, the other way around. Everybody can use Android, Google or Microsoft or whoever the patent owners don't, don't say that, okay, you can't use this, but everybody uses it. And because of the use, large scale use, they make more money. So that's the basic example I wanted to start with. So uh, uh, about Open Invention Network, this is a global community. This has been initiated in the year 2005. The objective is basically reduce patent tension. So when I use the word patent tension, what does this mean? The word patent tension here means that there are two types of entities across the globe who, you know, has been uh, suing companies. So one could be one is called non-practicing entities or patent assertion entities. The other is called operating entities, which are entities which makes goods or services and they sell their goods or services. But a patent assertion entity doesn't do any production or providing any services. They just buy patents and start infringing, uh, filing infringement cases or even legal notices to various entities. So today, Open Invention Network has become one of the largest IP community in the world. We have 3,800 plus community members. Every day we have more community members. So our community members includes open source projects, startups, uh, the biggest companies in the world you can think of in all sectors. It is not just a software and application uh, who, who are building it. Today, there are the biggest logistics companies, the biggest telecom companies, because everything today open, uh, operates on open source and Linux. So that is the uh, uh, community we have initiated. This was initiated, as I told you, in 2005. We have community members across the globe. And uh, every two years, we uh, increase the Linux definition. When I use the word Linux definition, uh, the software and applications packages we increase. So let's say uh, Apache, uh, you know, Hyperledger, or you know, any of these softwares which was not there Previously, we include those uh, packages after uh, every two, two, two and a half years. Uh, so that's what we do. So how do we, as a community, help our members? So we have each community member who joins us gets a cross license to 3,700 uh, 3, plus softwares and applications. So it could be Hyperledger, which is your uh, blockchain and other technology. Uh, then uh, there could be uh, you know, Android. So like this, there are so many packages, uh, 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 this automotive grade Linux, which is a new uh, technology that is also part of this package. 
you get access to various patent portfolio we own. Uh, so we have uh, patents from US of US origin. We we have bought those patents. Uh, we have bought patents. Uh, we own patents from Germany, Europe, China. So in various jurisdictions, we own patents. Any of the community members can use this patent pieces. They don't have to pay us any royalty for using this. The only thing is that if they can use this only if they are a member of the community. There is no commercials to being part of the community. What we have also done is we have tied up with another community called as United Patents, which has an open source zone. So we support, we have partnered with IBM, Linux Foundation, Microsoft, Facebook, and joined and supported the Unified Patents open source zone. So Unified Patents goes and litigates against various uh, patent assertion entities or non-practicing entities uh, across the globe. And primarily we have seen a lot of patent litigation in US and in US also the Texas courts are the most uh, famous or infamous for patent litigation, this uh, non-practicing entities litigation. We also uh, deliver royalty free access to Linux system patents and uh, community as a own, whole, uh, we own 2.7 million patents and applications in total. So that is the cross licensing part. So we also enable in this manner the collective intelligence of the global ecosystem because our community members includes smaller startups, biggest companies in the world, even open source projects. So we are a sum total of various uh, thought processes, diverse companies, startups, projects. So we also have been in the past uh, so many years we have been in uh, action we have uh, helped in uh, you know rejecting many low quality patents because low quality patents is a risk for the whole ecosystem we also help various uh, community members who have been attacked by the patent trolls or non practicing entities so we protect the whole open source ecosystem through this mechanism so how do we do that so any community member can join the community it, through an e-license. It takes three minutes to join the community. So we have various events like for the Asian community, we have the uh, you know Asian legal network where we discuss various issues which are uh, pertaining to the ecosystem, uh, the newer areas of technology which is happening, like let's say automatic grade Linux or hyper uh, Hyperledger. All these technologies we discuss. We also discuss various issues like licensing issues, open source licensing issues, and other issues. We also work with various other platforms and the ecosystem. Like we also work with Open Chain. Open Chain is a project of the Linux Foundation, which helps in complete compliance in the open source uh, world. So here we are talking about the patent aspect. There they are uh, dealing with the uh, copyright aspect, where the complete end-to-end -end, uh, compliance of the supply chain is happening there. Uh, so we there's this way work with everybody in the ecosystem across the globe. We also look into upstream and adjacent Linux technologies. We also utilize the Lay Smith American Invents Act, uh, which is for pre issuance submissions to limit the claim scope. You would have seen many times that you know the claims are too broad. So we uh, use our collective uh, wisdom uh, in various instances, especially in the uh, we are focused only on the open source and Linux ecosystem. We don't deal with that is our mandate. So we only are focused on this and in case we find a very wide claim, we oppose it. We use our collective strength and oppose those. And if you see, we are expanding into all areas into medical science, financials. So you will see members from across the globe, across domains. You name the sector. We have community members there. We also invest in uh, various other community uh, work. Like we are part of, we have supported the uh, Unified Patents Open Source Zone, uh, who goes and litigates against various patent trolls. We also support software heritage, and I have also already discussed with Open Chain what they do. And Linux Defenders is a community which uh, helps in uh, filing for defensive patents, so that uh, you know various entities, especially in the open source community, uh, many projects are not interested in filing for a patent. 
but at the same time, they also don't want somebody else to file a patent. So this way, by through filing defensive patents, they are creating a prior art. So I think there was a problem with your, uh, like none of the participants could see the slide. So is it fine if we display the side slide? Yeah, yeah please, please, please. Okay. Sir. So just let me know whenever you want me to switch the slides. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. So we also provide this insider bi-monthly e-newsletter to uh, keep our, uh, you know, members informed about the happenings across the globe. As I told you, we have community members who are small, uh, you know, projects, individuals, contributors, everybody. So this way we uh, create a platform where everybody are on the same page, irrespective of, the, of their size or their uh, geographical uh, location. So broadly, this is what we do. Uh, Shaker, if we can move on to the next slide, yeah. Yeah, so I think we have already discussed this. Uh, if we can move to the next slide. Yeah, just the one slide before that, one slide before that. Yeah. So uh, why would uh, community, uh, the companies and startups and projects join us? There are various reasons. One, uh, we joining being part of the community helps in reducing and mitigating your patent risk, especially in the only in the area of open source and Linux. As I told you, our mandate is to work and to reduce the patent risk and uh, patent tension around Linux and open source. And uh, this also helps in uh, attracting uh, uh, most of the talents because today uh, getting the best talent in the open source community is important. Uh, this also protects your partners. So for example, X company has joined the community. Uh, their softwares and applications are used by, well, let's say various companies across the globe. Uh, so today, if you, that company has been sued for uh, patent infringement, then there is a risk which their partners also have will face across the globe. So it is very important that if uh, your partners are part of the community, then uh, the chances of you facing those risks, like you would have seen in many cases where uh, because of patent infringement, uh, goods could not be exported or imported into that country. So, uh, you know, being part of this community helps you in ensuring that there is no patent risk because uh, 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 only on Linux and open source uh, across the uh, globe, because most of the community members uh, are the patent owners, like let's say IBM, which is the largest collection owner of Linux platform patents in the world is part of the community. In fact, IBM initiated this uh, community uh, 16 years back. Uh, you talk about Google, you talk about uh, any company, Toyota, uh, they are all part of this ecosystem, so it uh, it brings a lot of uh, risk mitigation uh, being part of this community, and it also we provide uh, you know royalty free access to our patent portfolio. So in case you are for, uh, sued by a patent troll uh, or an operating entity, so in case of an operating entity sues you, we will provide you uh, any of the patents we own. And you can count use that and to counter sue them. Uh, in case you have been sued by uh, a non-practicing entity or a patent troll, we call it as, then we will provide you prior art. So we will see all those instances later in the slide as we go around. And as I told you, the community joining is free. Uh, using those uh, patents is royalty free. We don't, you don't have to pay anything for uh, being part of the community or using any of these uh, patents we own. Uh, we own patents in all areas of technology, whether it is FinTech, whether it is biometric, medical technology, we have patents in all areas of technology you can think of. And as I told you, we have patents in US, Germany, Europe, and China. And we have spent almost more than 100 million US dollars to acquire these patent pieces. So this acts as a defensive uh, chest. And uh, also it can be used by any community member. Yeah, Mr. Shekhar, can you, can we move on to the next slide? So as we discussed, 
the problem uh, which the whole like open source ecosystem faces is from two types of entities. One is called a patent decision entity. You would here see this as PAE or an NPE, non-practicing entity. So both these types of entities don't do any operation. They don't produce any goods or services. The only thing what they do is they incorporate an entity. Mostly it is an LLC. US, Luxembourg, all these jurisdictions and across the globe. They will buy patents. So who do they buy patents? They would buy patents from individual uh, patent holders, or it could be corporates who are selling those patents, or it could be universities, like some of the universities in US sell their patents. So any of them, when they sell their patents, these pa patent association entities or non-practicing entities buy those patents. And once they buy those patents, they either start, start sending legal notices or sue them in various jurisdictions. And that's the way they uh, create this patent engine. The problem with this is that patent uh, has been given to the inventor. It is an incentive to the inventor. But here, the inventor is not getting the incentive. It is a third party which is buying this patent and then asserting it against various entities. This creates a problem. And the other reason why this is a problem is many a times, since the cost of uh, litigation or uh, you know claim uh, chart is very high, lawyer's fees is really high, most of the companies even, uh, they settle it off. They don't challenge the validity of the patent claim. They don't uh, defend themselves. And in some cases, just because it's a nuisance value, they settle it off. And you would see, I'll show case to you uh, many various instances where Indian companies have been sued. And in most of these cases, they have settled with the patent rule. What happens is then is that this encourages this patent rule. Let's say they bought a patent from me. I sold it for $25,000. They, once they buy this patent from me, they will sue all the companies, let's say it is in the network networking uh, space, that patent is, which is owned by me and has been bought by a patent tool. Then that patent tool will sue every entity which is into networking, directly or indirectly, and make more money from that. So I, who was the inventor, who ha had to be incentivized as per law, will not get in any incentive. It has been taken over by a patent tool. They create havoc in the whole ecosystem. And many a times it is uh, futile patents or it is stupid patents or it is there is no actual infringement of that patents by the defendant. But all this has to be decided by a court of law. Litigation is very expensive. So many a times what we have seen is especially smaller entities generally settle it off because uh, the license fee they would ask is, let's say the 15 years lifetime is left for that patent. So if they ask even $2,000 per year, still it is cheaper than litigation. So startups and companies, even bigger companies generally go for settlement, which, uh, you know, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, supports this patent rules because they are encouraged to buy more patents and sue more companies. The other entity which creates this uh, problem is patent tension is operating entities, which are two usual companies, which has, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, they do provide uh, products or services across the globe. And uh, they try to, uh, uh, you know, benefit from their monopoly they own. And uh, they try to create the uh, havoc in the ecosystem because the problem, it is not that, uh, you know, they should not be, enforcing their IP, uh, patents rights. The problem is on fundamental technology, they should not be uh, enforcing their IP, especially in open source and uh, Linux. Because uh, if, as I told you earlier, if one entity start asserting against another entity, the other entity also would have various Linux and open source patents, which would also against uh, file an infringement case against this entity. And there will be no end to litigation because these are fundamental technologies. So that's the only reason uh, why we say that only on Linux and open source, 
please don't fight against each other because there will be no end to litigation. And uh, let's create the, uh, this uh, patent tension free ecosystem in this fundamental technology. Uh, can we move on to the next slide? Yeah. So this would give you an idea about various entities in India who has been sued. So if you see Unilock is a notorious uh, patent troll in based out of US, they have uh, a US entity, they have a Luxembourg entity, they had sued Hiking. You remember Hike, uh, which, which was a social messenger app uh, platform. I don't know whether that company is in existence now. Right now. They just network, you know, this guy entity. Uh, this is a Bangalore based uh, Pan India entity. Infosys, you know, Infosys was uh, sued uh, last year, end of last year. Uh, you would see Z Enterprises. Uh, you would see Fresh Does Zoho. To my understanding, uh, Zoho uh, CEO has, Sridhar Vembu has made a clear statement that they will fight the patent trolls. They will not settle with any patent trolls. That such statements is such a welcoming statement because uh, the patent trolls will, uh, you know, think twice before suing uh, Zoho. And uh, they are, as a company, they are taking a clear stand that they will not encourage patent troll activism. So that's a good stand from an Indian entity. Uh, in fact, they have been so at least, at least uh, 20 litigations are uh, happened against Zoho. Uh, Fresdesk also has been sued almost 10 times. Uh, but, you know, among these companies, uh, uh, you know, Zoho is the one which has stood out and uh, clearly made a public statement that we will not settle with any patent trolls. So that's a very welcoming uh, stand by an Indian entity. So. You would see here smaller, bigger companies, everybody who has faced this problem. And, uh, you know, there are more companies, but, you know, because of paucity of time and, uh, you know, uh, we have only 45 minutes to discuss this. So I have only included these companies, but there are many more. Uh, Shekhar, can we move on to the next slide? Yeah. So what has changed during the COVID times? So many entities, operating entities, individuals have sold their patents because uh, they have tried to monetize their patent portfolio because many of the patents they may not be using. Even if they are using, they want to make money. Uh, so a lot of patents has been sold and most of these patents has been bought by non-practicing entities and patent trolls. So what we have seen is a lot of more patent troll activity. So the next three slides would show you how many, uh, you know, what is the extent of increase? Yeah. So if you see the first one, which is to, in the year of 2005, so we have divided this into three uh, categories, operating company, which we have already discussed, non-practicing litigation, uh, non-practicing entity litigation, at least one patent originated from an operating company. The third category is all patents originated from an NP, so which is in orange. And operating company litigation is in dark blue. And light blue is non-practicing and litigation, at least one patent originated with an or, or operating company. So if you see in quarter one of 2021, we have already seen 48%. Okay, this is just one quarter. Because as I told you, there has been a lot of patent which has been sold by individuals and companies and most of these patents has been brought by these patent trolls. So can we go to the next slide? Yeah. So this will uh, give you a better demonstration. Uh, in 2016, we had 22 cases. In 2021, we have already 36 cases. So there has been a quite an increase in the number of uh, cases uh, of uh, patent troll activity, which we will see. So here, if you see the uh, the area which is in black, that is operating company, uh, we have divided this into various non-practicing entities. One is in uh, or orange, if you see, it is non-practicing small companies. So sm very few uh, entities are there. Non-practicing entity that's in blue, light blue. 
and non practicing entity individual that is in dark blue so you will see uh, a lot of 482 cases in 2021 and these are companies like unilock and others who has been mcom these are the non practicing entities which are large scale entities and uh, the number of cases of uh, non practicing entity individual is small like you will see just uh, 203 cases but you will see a constant increase that's what i want to point out to you guys the patent troll litigation uh, is only increasing as every year we are going through uh, can we move on to the next slide yeah so this will sh surely demonstrate to you operating entity and non practicing entity so in 2021 we have already seen the maximum which is 721 cases by non practicing entities and uh, by operating entities it is only 79 so you can see the rise in the cases and that is for only for a simple reason because most of during the covid times most companies have sold their patents in various portfolios and this has been bought by these patent trolls and now they will create an havoc in the ecosystem uh, can we move on to the next slide yeah so this i want to show you one example where genome foundation which is an open source foundation was sued by a patent troll called as Rothschild. So when Rothschild sued them, uh, what happened was uh, uh, the uh, Genome Foundation joined the community. What we did was we gave them prior art and uh, they collected money to uh, by crowdsourcing to litigate back and defend themselves. And once they uh, challenged the patent uh, of uh, Rothschild through the prior art given by Open Invention Network, Rothschild withdrew the case against uh, Genome Foundation and gave patent license to all the patents they own, not just the patent allegedly which Genome Foundation was infringing upon, but all the patents which Rothschild uh, owned, uh, patent imaging company owned. So this is the way we, uh, you know, ensure and help our community members. So as I told you, uh, whether you are a company, you are a project, you are a foundation, you are an individual, we help you, irrespective of your size. And there is no commercials to being part of the company. Uh, can we move on to the next slide? I think uh, if you guys have any question, uh, I'll be happy to answer those. And my details are already provided here. Uh, so that uh, any follow up questions you have, you know, you want to ask me anything in uh, in person. Also, you can uh, reach out to me. Yeah. Thank you, Shekhar. No problem, sir. Thank you. Uh, there were a couple of questions in the chat. So okay. Let me just. Can't see them. I don't know why. Uh, so there was a clarification. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Singh asks whether the word that were, you were using, whether it's co-option or or co-opetition. Co-option. Co so from the competition, the TION is taken. Got it, sir. Got it. So I can't see any of the questions here. Maybe. Uh, there's this question from. Uh, I saw it. Uh, Mr. Rashok Kumar asks, sir, that hmm. is OIN working through crowdfunding? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so uh, we have three types of members in OIN. One is full members. So companies like IBM, Google, Toyota are full members. So if you want, if somebody wants to be a full member, they have to make us a one-time contribution of 20 million US dollars, annual revenue, uh, 20 million US dollars as a one-time uh, grant. And uh, 
we also have associate members. So Tom, Tom and canonical, uh, are our associate members. So they have to make a one time grant of 10 million us dollars. And, uh, if you, if somebody wants to join as a normal member, there is no cost. And, uh, this, uh, grants helps us to buy this uh, defensive patent po portfolio we own and which can be used by any community member. So that's how we support ourselves. And uh, we we also work like a uh, bootstrapped uh, startup uh, with no employee other than the CEO. And except the US office, there is no office across the globe. So we only focus on uh, buying patents and uh, trying to help our community members and maintain patent peace on Linux and open source. That is our objective. So there is no cost we incur other than that. Varad sir, thank you so much for being so candid. We are still awaiting a couple of more questions. Yes. So Ashish asks that does OIN work in nanomaterials field? Uh, in brackets, he puts broad claims specifically in nanometer range. So, uh, as I told you, our mandate is to work and ensure there is no patent tension around Linux and open source. So anything, any software and application which reads on Linux and open source, we are there. But if it is not, it's beyond Linux and open source, we are not there. Very clear. I think that answers that question perfectly well, sir. Yes. Are there any concluding thoughts that you'd like to share with us today, sir? Yeah. First of all, let me thank, uh, you know, Nalsa, Shekhar. Mr. Arandya Sarka for, uh, you know, creating this ecosystem to, you know, collaborate and talk on various issues. I think it's also a learning experience for us also, because, uh, you know, we get various questions from various, uh, you know, people who have various experiences in life. So I'm thankful for, uh, to Nalsa professor and uh, all the people who have worked towards making this event a grand success. And I'm also thankful to the audience, uh, patient audience. <laughs> so I'll be happy to take any questions on open source also, uh, since I do, uh, a lot of work around that. So uh, I saw some questions, uh, from uh, various people in the previous session also around GPL and stuff. So I've just shared, uh, an article, which I wrote, uh, check before you ship. So what are the things, what you should do when you ship a software, uh, like the previous speaker also mentioned about, uh, you know, various compliances, which is required under GPL. So what people also don't understand is that it's not just the code, even at the library level. So in the last two and a half years, I had an opportunity to enforce various open source licenses against various banks and financial institutions in the country. And what I've seen is that many cases where things are outsourced to third parties, uh, you know, there is no compliance done by the third party. Uh, in this particular case, we, what we saw was our library was under a GPL. So, which meant that if you had to use those, uh, you know, library, uh, without paying us anything, you have to release the source code. And being financial institution, they could not release the source code. So the only alternative they had was to take the commercial license from us, which also they did not take. So, uh, yeah, I think I see a question from Mr. Murthy. Uh, Mr. Murthy, uh, if Infosys, Wipro, uh, Tech Mahindra are all the companies which are part of OIN. And I think they're all IT majors. Uh, Mindtree, LNT. Yeah. So all these guys are part of OI. And, uh, in case you want a sectoral understanding of who are the members of OI, uh, I can also share it with you also, also there on the website, each sector, who are the members of OI and the complete list of OI members are also there. So we are uh, very fair 
uh, and uh, clear on those things. So all this information is there on the website of Open Invention Network. Uh, and the list of patents which Open Invention Network owns is also provided there in the community platform. And in case you have any doubt, please feel free to ask me also. Sir, Apoor is asking that if you could share your thoughts regarding the open access movement and the challenges that it faces in the publishing industry specifically. Uh, I think uh, there are better people to answer on the publishing industry. Uh, but, you know, uh, see, slowly what, what, what I feel is that this open movement where, uh, you know, IP is considered differently. Obviously, there will be challenges uh, uh, which we will see, and we have already seen some of the challenges already across the globe. But uh, uh, various fields, not just uh, the uh, you know the industry you are talking about, various industries you will see there is a move towards collaboration because resources are limited. We all understand so. Only if we can collaborate with each other, we all, each company, each entity has their own strengths. So if we can collaborate with each other and also compete at the same time. So that's why I laid this stress on the concept of co-option where there is competition also. The objective of money making is also there, but at the same time, uh, because incentive has to be provided. Without incentive, there is no IP. Concept of incentive is part of IP is fundamental element of IP. So as long as there is some mode of incentive, so in open invention network or whether the open source community, it is the reward or the high of being a contributor to an open source project. It is not the monetary reward. It is the high of being, uh, you know, considered as a contributor to an open source project, which is my star and which allows me to be accepted globally. So I could be hired because of that. I could be consulted because of that. So that is the way it should be considered, not uh, in the financial terms. So any sector, uh, there is a huge scope because as we said, resources are limited, whether it is financial resources or human resources. So that, that's the reason there is a scope for all this uh, growth for this movements. Understood, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing that. There's a, another question, sir, which says how to tackle down the patent troll in other sector as you are focusing on Linux. Yeah. So let's say Linux and open source, as I told you, uh, except pharma, even in pharma, if you're making any software or application, there is also Linux and open source. So today Linux and open source is in every sector, but yes, there are few sectors. Like if you say pure science, we may not be there, but if you talk from space to, uh, you know, film industry to anything, there is open source or Linux there. Uh, so broadly, almost every sector we are there. Maybe in uh, you know pure science, pure pharma, we may not be there, but anything with uh, hardware or software, open source or Linux is there. So all those areas we cover, but uh, other than that, yes, we don't cover. But uh, there are there should be some communities like this because patent roll is a problem which companies across the globe face, across sectors face. And companies cannot fight fight it in silos. So a lot of us are also students and researchers here. So can you probably suggest us some interesting research topics within the domain of open source network where we can probably look and uh, develop on the field a little further? Yeah. So. Uh... I see that nobody has done a report on the effect of patent trolls on Indian companies, a detailed report. So, you know, there is a huge opportunity lying there 
And another area which I can think of is also, see, we are, we call ourselves as an IT superpower or a software superpower. But let's understand our understanding of open source or many of these things. Even the government of India as late as four or five years back only had an open source policy. So there is a lot of opportunity for India to work on open source, uh, where provide various services on open source. And uh, as students, we can uh, understand this in more detail. So there are communities like uh, open chain where uh, you know how to ensure open source compliance in the complete supply chain of software so the software might be made in, let's say in x company in one part of the world and another part of the software or an application is made uh, let's say you are an automobile company and you are sourcing your software from multiple vendors across the globe how do you ensure compliance in every by every vendor? So that is being ensured by uh, Open Chain, which has now also been adopted as an ISO standard. So uh, and uh, so once you look into this, uh, you know there is a great opportunity because see whether you talk about metaverse or hyperledger or blockchain, all these are the base is open source. And if things are clear on for you on uh, open source, there is a huge uh, potential there. Thank you so much, sir. I think that concludes all the questions that we had today.